here's M's capital account, here's M's capital account here. It's a credit, we're gonna debit it, that'll make it go down. So we're gonna say this equals the 9,000. That should make this go down to, uh, down to the 142.2. Let's see if that's what happens when we select enter. Goes down to 142.2. Then we're gonna be here, we're gonna post the B's capital account. Here's B, here's the capital, that's a credit. We're gonna do the opposite thing to it, a debit. Making it go down, we're gonna say that equals the 6,000. Once we hit enter, the capital account we would hope would go down to the 118.2. See if that's what happened. The 124.2 enter goes down to 118.2. Then we're gonna post the L. Here's L. Here's L. Here's what we're gonna post L. We're gonna say this equals, and we're gonna to point to that 15. What's gonna happen when we hit enter? It should go down to the 249.6. Let's see if that's what happens down to the 249.6 and we are back in balance. If we add up all of our capital accounts now, they tie out to 680, which ties out to 680 over here. Okay, so we're gonna look at one more scenario now and we're gonna have the same situation. We're gonna add a new partner, the new partner still being R. Uh, we're still gonna put R on the books at a 25% interest. However, now R is gonna pay us 270,000 instead of 140,000. So you can see that uh, the reverse kind of thing is gonna happen here. So let's see what happens under this scenario. So once again, let's start out by looking at the trial balance and thinking about what we do know. If we look at the trial balance over here, we can see that we have these three partners on the books and we're gonna implement R. We're gonna put R on the books. R is gonna pay the company cash. So when we ask our first question, is cash affected? Yeah, the cash is gonna, they're gonna, the company, the, the partnership, it's gonna get cash from R in order to give R the 25% interest. Therefore, cash is gonna go up. How are we gonna make cash go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is. It's a debit, therefore we're gonna debit it. So we're gonna copy that, I'm gonna right click and copy it. Put our cursor in I-59, right click and paste it, one, two, three. So there's that, and we know it's gonna go up by how much? How much is they gonna pay us? 270. So we know that cash is gonna go up by 270. And then we also know that we're putting a new partner on the books. Who's the new partner? R. R is the new partner. We know that uh, all capital accounts have credit balances unless unless they're overdrawn, which that's not the case when they first come in and put in money. So we're gonna say that R has to have a capital account that's gonna be credited to make it go up. So that means that we're gonna credit the capital accounts. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna put that down here and right click and paste one, two, three. So we know, we know that we are gonna credit the capital account, but we, the tricky thing is we're not necessarily going to credit it for the 270. We're going to credit it for 25% interest of the um, partnership. What is a 25% interest right now? Well, we know that the book value is the equity section. So if we took the 550 of assets minus the 10, that means that we have 540 of net assets. That's the same as the equity account. 540. The equity account is the net assets of the company. And, and right now, we would say times 0.25, that would be a 25% interest, uh, 135. However, the new partner is going to put in another uh, 270, which is going to, of course, increase the amount of assets in the book. So we'll do a, a quick calculation to see what 25% interest of the net assets will be after R puts in the added 10 or whatever money that we just said they're gonna put in, which is the 270. So let's come to our worksheet over here. We got our capital accounts reflected here, here, here. Total capital, which represents the book value, assets minus liabilities of 540. And then the new partner is gonna put in 270,000. Therefore, the book value, the assets minus the liability, meaning the total equity is gonna go up by 272 equals the 540 plus the 270 and that will equal the 810. So now we're gonna be at 810, and now we're gonna say that's the new net value of the partnership. We're gonna give R a 25% interest, 0.25. If we wanna make that a percentage, we can go to the Home tab, we can go to the Numbers group, and we can select the percentage, and we're gonna give R 25% interest. Therefore, we're gonna say this equals the 810, times the 25% interest means that R is going to be on the books at 2025. So that's the answer to this question over here. We're, we're going to credit not the amount of cash that was received for R's capital account, not 270, but 
the 2025. So we were going to credit negative for the credit for this worksheet 2025. And now, of course, we have a problem in that the debits do not equal the credits. The debits are greater than the credits by 67.5. So we need another credit of 67.5 in order for our journal entry to be in balance. What are we going to credit for 67.5? The three other partner capital accounts. So uh, because we put R on the books for 25% uh, interest, which is 2025, and uh, they paid more than that, they paid 270 these other three partners are going to get an increase to their a bonus to their capital accounts by the difference because uh, and we're going to have to increase them with another credit. So we're going to credit these three. This is this is good for these three partners. And again, you might be asking, why <laughs> you know would R pay um, 2025? I mean, why would R pay 270 thousand when they're only getting a net assets of 2025? I mean, we could, we could see right now what the book value of the company's worth. It's worth 810. A 25% interest is 2025. Why would the partner come in and pay 270? And again, there could be multiple reasons. There could be you know intangible type of assets or, or liabilities that uh, are not reflected, or or thinking that there are going to be some types of assets or that and liabilities that are not valued correctly, and or uh, there could be the idea that. R is thinking, hey, this is a good partnership and they have a lot of income potential in the future and therefore R is willing to pay a, pay a premium, pay more than just the book assets because they're counting on future revenue that will outweigh that. So whatever the agreement is or why they came to it, this uh, is very common that this will happen and so we're going to have to record this and adjust the capital accounts. So let's see how we're going to do that then. If we go down here, we're going to say we're going to have to uh, make this adjustment again. What will the adjustment be for? Well, uh, we are paid the partnership 270 minus what we're going to give R in terms of the capital 2025 means that we've got 67.5. We're going to have to allocate that. That's our plug number, remember, that we're going to need over here. But we're going to have to allocate it to these three partners, MBL, by the partnership percent 30, 20, 50. So let's do that. We're just going to allocate that out. We're going to say this equals the 67.5 times the 30% and tab. So we're going to increase M's capital account by the 20,250. Then for B, we're going to say this equals the 67.5 times the 20% and tab. So we're going to increase B's capital account from 124.2 by 13.5. Then L equals the 67.5 times the 50% and enter. That means the 264.6 is going to go up 33,750. Uh, 33, so what's going to be the new capital accounts then? R is going to be on the books for what we decided to allocate, which is 25% of the 810 or the 2025. And M is going to be on the books for equals the, begin, the beginning capital plus what we're going to increase the capital balance by their portion of that 67.5 then we're going to have B's capital account will be the beginning balance 124.2 plus the amount of the 67.5 we allocate or 13.5 tab then L is going to equal the beginning balance for L of 264.6 plus the amount of the 67.5 we allocate of 33.750 therefore we're going to have new capital account balances after we record the entry of RMBL equaling 810 which is of course this 810 up here and then we can sum that up equals the sum of this 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 enter that gives us the two the 810 all right so at the end of the day r should be on the books for this m b and l should be on the books for these numbers respectively let's see if that's what happens so we're going to scroll over here and remember what we were left with on our journal entry is the fact that we need a credit of 67.5 Here's the 67.5. Here's how we're going to allocate it between MB and L. So once again, I'm going to highlight MBL. I'm going to right click, copy that. I'm going to scroll down here to I61, right click and paste it. One, two, three. And then we're just going to put these numbers in respectively. So I'm going to put in case 61. I want a negative of this 20,250. Uh, just make sure 
for the purposes of recording, we're going to represent the credits with negative or bracketed numbers. B is going to equal or negative of the 13.5. We're going to credit B 13.5 and we're going to credit the L's capital count by the 33,750 and enter. So are we in balance now? Let's see, if we take a look at the credits, we're at 270, that equals the debits. We can also highlight the debits minus the credits equal zero. So we are in balance. Let's post this out and see what it, if it does what we think it should do. What do we think it should do? We think that R's capital count should end up to be that, M's capital count that, B that, L that. And then we should have a total capital of the 810, which also represents the book value, the assets minus liability of the company. All right, partnership, I should say, of the partnership. All right, so let's post this out. We're going to post cash first. So cash is up here. So we are in 059. 059 equals. We're going to point to that 270. That's a debit. This is a debit. It's going to make the debit go up in the debit direction to the 820. Then we're going to post R's capital. So R's capital is here. R capital here, we're going to post it in the blue area in 064 equals, we're going to point to that 2025, we're going to bring this balance up to 2025. Then we're going to post M, here's M here, here's M here, here's where we're going to post it in 061 equals, we're going to point to that uh, 20,250 and enter. So it goes up from 151.2 to 171.450. That should be reflected down here, 171,450. Then we're gonna post B's capital account here. So here's B capital account there. We're gonna post it into our blue section. Equals, we're gonna to point to B's capital. Should increase the capital to the 137,7, which equals the 137,7 in our worksheet. Then L, here's L, here's L. Here's where we're gonna post L in 063 equals and we'll point to that 33,750 bring the balance up to the 298,350 equaling the 298,350 here if we see what the total adds up to we're going to highlight these adds up to 810 that's the 810 here and that also remember represents the book value it represents the assets minus the liabilities 810 equals the equity 810 and that is that